let's begin with my Instagram poster. And at the top, you can see here the title of today's lesson, lesson number 60, Hospitality by Decree. And in this lesson, what we're going to be looking at are words which contain at the very root b r z an br -zan. I've added deba or eba to this basic root and then more as well. And I think that that's kind of where uh, series two makes sense to me. That series one looked at the essential things at the beginner's level, sort of progressing into what I think is essential. Series two is now taking that knowledge and introducing difficult parts of the beginner's level. And there are the things which video by video presented me with the biggest difficulty, almost like from a native English perspective, I just couldn't grasp. So this is one of them. Words that contain brzan. We're going to be looking at two conversations, saubari pirveli and saubari ori, and three words that contain brzan, but with obviously different pieces added. I will say that here are the references here for more, yeah, on here on the right. More is indeed what's happening here. This uh, series of preverbs is, again, what I would consider to be essential. I haven't really gone through those yet uh, in any of my videos, but there are obviously videos out there that look at it. But as we know, a brzandeba. Amo brzande baga brzande bagada brzande bagadmo brzande bagamo brzande bada brzande ba and so on. We're going to be really focusing on just these three because I think that they are the ones which I think we're going to need. In sequence, mo brzande ba is your arrival as a distinguished guest. She brzande ba or she mo brzande ba is you being invited in to whoever's hosting you. And then da brzandeva means to sit. So you arrive, mo brzandeva. You come into the place where they're hosting you, she brzandeva. You take a seat, da brzandeva. Now, yeah, how complicated is that? After learning different verbs like mosvla, which means to come, Shedit, which you might already use already. Shemodit, come in. Super polite, come into my home. Um, Dajeki, sit. <laughs> that we already learned, I would say, ways to achieve this. But for some reason, when Brzandeba is in the room, or words that contain this essential root, Brzan, Brzan, then things start to get funky. And let's look at some examples first so we can see what I'm talking about. This is a very simple dialogue. Saubari Pirveli. Looks like something from a very easy book. At the beginning, Gamarjoba. Gamarjoba. Dilam Shvidobisa. Rogor Burzante Beat. Rogor Brzan Debit Kargad Tatquen Next dialogue Sabari Ori In this one it's in a restaurant, no? So you've a person has arrived and they are being greeted in a very polite way because they're the client. Sort of the client is king. Remember that. Eteli host kveni mobrzan neba chvens restauranti. Eteli host kveni mobrzan neba chvens restauranti. Eteli host kveni mobrzan neba chvens restauranti. Welcome. In she our chvens restaurant. I've substituted restaurant she. Followed by, please take a seat, sir. 
Please have a seat, madam. Getroft, da brzandit. Getroft, da brzandit. Take a seat. And then, shortly, Ras sheukvetat. Ras sheukvetat. Super formal, super elegant. And then the client. <laughs> no hello, no thank you, just jirarvitz. Um, uh, we're not uh, judging the uh, quality of the responses. In fact, we're looking at what the person said. This person, we're assuming, is the native Georgian speaker. The reason why you know they're native is because of their ability to use this form, which seems so confusing to a non-native speaker. Brzan debit, meaning tkhen khart. Essentially, rogor brzan debit means rogor khart. We also know rogor khar, but we can see that it's quite formal. So the question is, what's wrong with rogor khart? As in rogor khart, kargad, the tkhen we've already learned. In our first slide, we're going to be looking at various sentences where brzande beat simply substitutes synonymously with khart. So that will be quite interesting for us to look at. Then on the other side, we've got here mo brzane ba and this fixed phrase keteli yichost kveri mo brzane ba. Welcome. Essentially, we're going to deconstruct that phrase. And then we've got here a command. Please have a seat. Dabrzandit. What's important to notice, of course, is that these dialogues aren't considered to be advanced. Essentially, Saubari Birveli is at the very beginning of our learning. Yet, all three of these words contain brzan, but with different endings. This one has a preverb. And indeed, if you want to know, before we move on to the first slide, this is the root, and indeed, perhaps an explanation. Brzaneba, at its very root, Brzaneba is an imperative command. Somebody of authority has commanded you to do something, and you have to follow that command. I'm obligating you to do so. There's an essence there of you don't have any authority over me. It's about authority, and it's about hierarchy. This is to give something by law, by decree. You have to do this. This is from me as a person, like a lord or a king or a commander or even like somebody or a lawyer, a doctor telling you what to do. Brzaneba. Then Brzandeba, in this case, as you can see here, Rogod Brzandebit, that's actually Slide one are the examples where Burzan debit means you. So, like from the beginning, the first conversation, Rogor Burzan debit means how are you? But Tkwen, and in the highest level of respect. Followed by another example which I thought was very revealing, which is Vin Burzan debit. Who are you? Vin Burzan debit. And I thought in this second example with Wien, you can see that the person is trying to avoid a social faux pas while at the same time showing maximum respect. I don't know who you are. Wien present der Beat. I'm almost pleading with you to tell me from the highest level of respect. And I think that that's really what needs to echo with many of these examples. If I use, for example, the phrase that's nice. But if it's just you and I say kargadi khavit, then it's very polite. If I say kargad burzante bodet, then I've taken it to the next level. The translation I gave was let a good day be had by you. I really wanted that translation. I wanted to show that Shakespearean theatre, this fancy, elegant, nobility of the phrase because it is grammatically quite complex we're talking about a subjunctive future wish that's why it's become so complex but in its essential part it's 
for you I'm wishing that particular good day because I respect you. So, kargar prezante bodet. And you can nowadays just say kargar. So, and uh, this is the next example, which I thought was very revealing too. So, uh, the scenario was I watched a lady go inside another lady's house. The owner was Lida. And the woman asked Lida, how old are you? And I think that in English we might say things like, uh, how old are you, madam? Uh, would you mind telling me how old you are? I think in English we've got other ways to get that out. But in Georgian, we have not only a title, which would be Kalbatono, which shows respect already. Uh, Lida, because of course in the Georgian tradition, your first name is where you receive the title. It would in English naturally be seen my family name, Mr. Smith. But Georgian, not necessary. So, Kalbatono Lida, Ramdenitz Lis Brzante Beat. Ramdenitz Lis Brzante Beat. How old are you? It's a personal question. It might even be considered an intrusive question. Indeed, who are you? How are you? How old are you? Are all perhaps intrusive questions. So, to avoid a disrespect, then you can use Brzante Beat instead of Tkwen to really safely know that you're being respectful. Uh, to a large extent, also, even more simpler phrases like Mugoni, Martali, Brzante Beat. Mugoni, I think, uh, I guess, I estimate. Martali, Brzante Beat. I think you are right. I essentially agree with you. So here we see these examples in their full form. So I've written here, just to be clear, that Brzan Debit is equal to Khart. And that's the main takeaway. With that understood, I'm going to introduce a word which I think helps illustrate the point of titles and names and lords and the, obviously the name of my class, which was Hospitality by Decree. Mbrzane Beli. Mbrzane Beli is the overlord, not necessarily a likable, nice person. The Mbrzanebeli, Mbrzanebeli, is the overlord. And if you want to know, Bechedi is a ring. Bechedi are rings. Bechedi, Bechedi, and we already heard that Mbrzane Beli is a lord of the rings. So if you Google Bech Debis Mbrzane Beli, you get the poster of the Lord of the Rings. And uh, I put this here because it was simply a coincidence that while I was researching this particular topic, I saw the poster. And it just gave me so much pleasure that I was very easily able, because I'd studied this root in this way, obviously with this D, that I understood. I mean, I could guess from the poster, but they have many movies, this Tolkien series. So you, I can't really always know which movie it is, especially if the title's written in Georgia. But uh, obviously with rings, I kind of got it. But I immediately translated Mubrzane Belli as Lord, the Lord of the Rings. And it gave me so much satisfaction. And just as a closing comment here, we can see that it's within, isn't it? That, of course, when we use the D form in the root, it is an active verb. We're using it. But when it's not there and it's simply a title, a nomination or a position in society, then obviously the D is missing. But the essence is still there. The nobility is there. The aristocracy is there. There's something very noble and respectful about using this verb in totality. The next slide looks at Saobari Ori, which was the restaurant scenario. And in that case, they said welcome using the word Mobrzaneba. Because 
Mopritzaneba obviously is your coming, your welcoming as a distinguished guest. The word here, stumrad, means as a guest, and it tags on there to just complete the concept. It's a it's a complete concept now, a complete idea. Stumrad Mopritzaneba is the same as stumrad mosvla. And we're going to be looking at expressions of both of these verbs here on the left and here on the right as to show the synonymous relationship. So here's the noun, Mopritzaneba, which is the coming as a concept. And then we've got Mopritzandit, which is a command. Mopritzandit, come here. I'm telling you, I'm commanding you to come here, but in the highest possible regard. So Mopritzandit, Come here, please. Now, if I work in a bank, I'm asking you as a client to come here. If I'm telling you what to do, but you don't belong there, it could be in a reception, it could be at border control. There are many situations in Georgia where you're going to hear Mopridzandit and they're talking to you. So move toward the person who said it, especially if they're looking at you. Mopridzandit is the same as Modit. If it's one person, modit, modit, ktrovt, modit. So here, what I've done is that I added ktrovt to say please. Bodishi uh, is also perhaps quite common. Modit, come here, come this way towards me. So we have mobrzandit, ktrovt, modit as synonyms. But that's from that root verb, and this is from this root verb. Remember, you can see here this D activating that as an imperative command. The other way I would think would be naturally from Mobrzandit is Dabrzandit. Sort of, they, they kind of follow each other, they follow suit. Mobrzandit, Dabrzandit. Come and sit, please, distinguished guest. That's kind of what's happening. But we'll go a bit further in the next slide to some of these examples, but you can see the synonymous relationship we have there. So, gamar joba ketli yichos tkveni mo brza neba, tkveni mo brza neba. Your mo brza neba. You've got it. It's yours, and it's something which I'm also taking care of. And that's in essence the concept. It means welcome. And ketli yichos tkveni mo brza neba. Learn it, and say it, and just memorize it. Frankly speaking. Translating this phrase is not relevant, simply because you understand now the concept of Mopritzaneba, you have the most important part. This is said on television, when they have a guest and you have the host on TV, it could be in a cooking television program. Influencers use this, you see this when people uh, welcome you, talk to you on their channel, maybe mine. So you might find, for example, the sort of, hello, friends, welcome. That's English, right? But in Georgian, you've got Mogesal Mebit, Megobrebo, Keteli, Yichos Tkveni Mopritzaneba. You see, I've got it memorized, but that's basically a standard um, influencer talk as well. So, Mogesal Mebit, Megobrebo, Keteli, Yichos. Welcome. And then, of course, welcome where? So we said, uh, rest oran she in the saubari ori. This time we've got chvens kape she to our cafe, right? I mean, Batumi at the moment, there are quite a lot of cafes. So, kamar joba keteli hot chveni mo prizaneba, chvens kape she. What a wonderful way to say hi. And they might say, da prizendit. Take a seat. The final slide looks at me giving you commands that are associated with hosting you. So, Mobrzandit is to come to me. Dabrzandit is I'm offering you somewhere to sit. Sit down, please be seated. Dabrzandit. And you can see here that they should follow that order, right? Mobrzandit, da, Dabrzandit. Come here and please take a seat. What's interesting in Georgian is that you've just changed the pre-verb, not the verb. And I think that that is, in essence, why I wanted to do this tutorial. 
Dajaki is what you will say to your friend. Das Khadit, these are groups of people. Actually, if you say Ktrovt, Das Khadit, you're speaking in a very formal way. I'm not saying that this column on the right is informal to some extent, because you can always make it more formal. But it's definitely a bit out of place if I say to my friends, you know, every time I meet them, you know, it, I think to some extent it starts to sound a bit ironic or even sarcastic, you know, sort of, uh, what? <laughs> you know, it's just far too pompous for a standard dialogue. So here we have more prezantit. I just wanted to add that here and the words that we came across in the previous slide because the final one to close today's tutorial is shemo prezantit. Shemo prezantit is essentially I've established a threshold between where I belong, which is the person who's hosting, and where you have arrived. So you have your mo prezaneba, you've arrived. Tkveni mo prezaneba, you're here. Knock, knock. I open the door and you are crossing the threshold from where you are outside, inside. So, more, of course, towards me, but shemo means going in towards me, and it means crossing the threshold of my home. Ordinarily, that's what it means. Shemo brzandit is a very nice way to say, my distinguished guests, please come into my home. Probably followed by da brzandit. Please, I'm offering you somewhere to sit as well. So just remember that they are, in fact, in essence, in this particular sequence, that's why I chose just those from that 12 different versions of preverbs to teach today. You can find occasions where abrzandit is needed uh, to please go up, you know, uh, from the other list of preverbs and the 12. In fact, it, that was only because the, it looked quite even on the presentation. There are more. And then, of course, Shemodit. Shemodi to my friend. Shemodi Dajeki. Shemodit Daschedit. Better. Ktroft. Shemodit. Is very polite. Indeed, if you're talking to just one person, it's really polite. But then you might, well, if, it, if you really don't know them and you want to perhaps disassociate yourself and just be formal, then Shemo Brzandit is fine. Da Brzandit then leads on to that. So that's it.